China's electric car market has just reached new levels. And all I can say is, wow. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. Viking, great to see you. Top automakers in China's plug-in vehicle market from January to May 2022 are BYD, SAIC in second place, Tesla in third, Cherry in fourth, and Geely Volvo in fifth. Now I should explain, Geely owns Volvo. It's not a JV. Geely does own Volvo. A lot of people still don't realize that. This is plug-in vehicles, not purely just electric cars. This is plug-in hybrids and fully electric cars. The market in China, wow. You know, the Chinese government did their best. They really tried pretty hard to put a stop to the electric vehicle market in May. In fact, they got so scared that they destroyed their own car market that they're now deciding that they're going to subsidize it to the tune of many billions of dollars for the rest of the year. Shanghai is putting in an additional 1500 US dollars per car for every single car for the rest of the year. And as a result, the markets jumped, right? Xpeng stocks, Neo stock price, the stock price of many different electric car manufacturers, BYD, CATL, they've all jumped massively 20, 30, 40, 50% over the last week as a result of this new stimulus that's coming. However, even in spite of the insane lockdowns in China that really did decimate the electric vehicle market, BYD achieved another record month and plug-in vehicles actually reached a record share. With the end of the COVID lockdowns, plug-ins went back to the fast lane, growing 109% year over year, and there were 403 registrations in May, 403,000 crazy. However, the interesting thing is of that 403,000, well, around 300,000 were purely electric. So plug-in hybrids were only 25% of the market, even though they actually are up considerably in China. It's the only country, the only market where they are up over the last quarter. The reality is electric vehicles still own 75% of that entire market. So what does this mean? Plug-in vehicles hit 31% market share in the world's biggest car market. I mean, it's the world's biggest by a big margin. It's not even close. Fully electrics alone accounted for more than 23% of all vehicles through the first five months of this year. Now, Jose Pontes from Clean Technica says that if electrification continues at this crazy pace, the market will be electric vehicle based by 2025. Imagine that the largest automotive market in the entire world is electric vehicle based in only three years time. I know many of you guys watching the channel, well, kudos to you, you called it. I've got to say, I've seen a few of your comments, a few of you have been saying it would happen. Well, there you go. Clearly it's going to happen. I actually think um, Jose is probably selling them short a little bit. I think it might even happen in 2024. Another measure of the importance of this market is the fact that China alone represented over half of all global plug-in registrations last month. I'm going to put, point that out again. This is pretty important. China alone represented more than half of all electric vehicle registrations in May. So, you know, I think it's probably time for us Westerners to stop criticizing the Chinese and to say, well, actually, they've installed more renewable energy than any other country in the world this year by a big margin. They bought more electric cars than any other country in the world this year by an enormous margin. Maybe there are some things that they're doing pretty well that we actually could do to emulate. And to be fair, Tesla and China are basically the two entities that have created the electric vehicle revolution. The top 20 plug-in vehicles in China in May, here they are, as provided by Clean Technica. First place was a Wuling Hongwan Mini EV, and second was a BYD Song Plus, then the BYD Han was in third. BYD Chin Plus was in fourth. The BYD Yen Plus in fifth. Holy moly, BYD second, third, fourth, fifth. Li One was next. GAC Aeon S next. Cherry EQ1, Cherry QQ Ice Cream. Chang'an Benny EV next. BYD Tang, GAC Aeon Y. Hozon Nita, BYD Dolphin, again another BYD. 
SAIC Row, Tesla Model Y Leap Motor, Volkswagen ID4, Great Wall or a Black Cat, and the Ato M5. Now, interesting, isn't it? The Chinese market used to be dominated by what? Well, last year even, it was dominated by Toyota, Volkswagen, Honda. Look at what's happening now. I've been calling this for months and months and months and months. Remember, the Chinese auto market is the most important auto market for pretty much every legacy auto company on the face of the planet. A lot of people make the incorrect assumption in saying that their profits from China are less than they are in Western countries. It's actually not true. Volkswagen makes 50% of its profit in China. Only 40% of its car sales are in the, are in the country. So it's actually an extremely important market. And legacy auto companies, well, they're losing the market. I mean, look at this list, right? There's not a single legacy auto company in the top 15. In fact, the only vehicle from a Western manufacturer, from a Japanese manufacturer, from a, just a legacy manufacturer that ranks in the top 20 was the Volkswagen ID4 in 18th place. That is staggering. So first place, Wuling Hongwan Mini EV. Well, General Motors certainly is leading the world when it comes to electric vehicle sales. And that clearly is Tesla, even in spite of General Motors' tri-joint venture with SAIC and Wuling. However, hey, got to point out the fact. I did make a video about Wuling and GM and SAIC having a global electric car, which actually is now on sale in Indonesia and a bunch of other Southeast Asian countries. It's going global. I'll put a link in the description below to that electric car, which you might have to purchase within the next, I don't know, 24 months. By the way, I know a lot of you are saying, no, 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 they don't meet um, safety regulations in America or Australia. That's wrong. That is 100% wrong. You know how I know that? Because they're on sale in Europe right now. Yes, they do need some modifications to meet those regulations. The modifications are not really all that significant, though. They don't need to modify the structure or anything like that. So it's wrong to assume that these mini electric cars in China won't hit the market. Now, the other thing to remember is there's a wide range of mini electric cars in China. There's not just the Willing Hong One Mini EV. There's EVs that are a bit bigger, a bit wider, a bit taller, a bit longer, a bit safer, have more safety aids. It's still extremely affordable. I've talked, I've spoken about a number of these different cars in videos on this channel over the last month, and I believe many of them are coming to the West. In fact, it's just a matter of time. Wuling Hongwan Mini EV, 34,000 registrations last month of May, meaning it won a next best seller title. Now, it's its fifth number one seller of the month. I expect Wuling, SAIC, and GM well, to be fair, Wheeling does make the car and deliver them. But anyway, I expect them to deliver probably around about 500,000 of those this year. Now, I love what Jose says. He says, while many deride it for not really being a car, that's a lot of baloney if you ask me. It looks like a car, drives like a car, it's a car. However, the truth is, for a little over 4,000 US dollars after subsidies, you have an EV that has four wheels, four seats, and a roof, which for many is enough to run their daily errands. The added bonus is that the people buying it, mostly females, mostly under 35 years old, are usually a hard to capture audience. This model and its success mark a new chapter in EV mobility. Not just, I mean, to be fair, probably a lot of people who have never had a car before, more than likely this will be their first car or something like this will be their first car. Now, if you live in a city, most people, this is all you need. Probably you don't even need this. Probably just an electric scooter or an electric bike. But frankly, I mean, look at the prices of electric bikes. This is the price of an electric bike, really. I mean, the average sales price of electric bikes here in Australia is, is around about 6000 Australian dollars. So we're talking like probably around about 4500 4, US dollars. Same price as this car. Crazy. Now, obviously, BYD had the next four vehicles. The next four. And they're not slowing down anytime soon, considering the fact they just opened their car gigafactory, which no one in the West has reported on at all. No one's mentioned it at all. Well, it's just opened. And another battery factory line has just opened as well. Plus, by the end of this year, they will have completed work on their 100 gigawatt hour lithium iron phosphate blade battery factory. And boy, oh boy, 
Imagine the number of EVs that factory is going to provide batteries for. Here is the list of the top 20 plug-in vehicles in China from January to May this year. Now, Tesla, they've had a hard time of it because their factory is in Shanghai and Shanghai was capital lockdown. So yeah, this list would be very different if that hadn't happened. But anyway, here's what it is. Wheeling Hongwan Mini EV with 161,000 deliveries was in first place. The BYD Song Plus with 127,000 deliveries in second. Then you got the BYD Chin Plus with 110,000 deliveries in third. Tesla Model Y was next with 81,000. Then the BYD Han EV with 72,000. Next, the BYD Dolphin with 48,000. Then the BYD Tang with 48,000. What does that mean, right? That means that of the top seven EVs, highest selling vehicles in China this year, BYD took five of the top seven places. That, my friends, is insane. And frankly, I'm glad that I bought BYD shares when I told all of you to. And some of you said, uh, Viking, you got it wrong. BYD share price is down. By the way, I didn't tell you to gamble by being buying BYD shares. I told you to buy them for 10 years, not for three months, and then to whinge that the share price goes up and down. It's always going to happen. You got to accept volatility. It's all part of the game. 10 years is the horizon, the time horizon. It's not three months. That's called gambling. Anyhow, who are the other cars here? Well, clearly, interestingly, the Cherry QQ ice cream has done really, really well. And that's a similar car to the Wuling Hongman Mini EV. Tesla Model 3 actually has is way further down the ranks than I expected, with only 37,800 deliveries over the first five months of this year in China. That will, of course, change dramatically over the rest of this year. And especially seeing as Tesla are upgrading the factory by August the 7th, they'll be at a production run rate of around 1.2 million EVs annually from the factory in Shanghai, which is insane. And it's insane considering they're going to double the size of that factory as well, probably by the end of the following year. What would that be? A run rate of 2.4 million, making it the world's biggest car factory by a very large margin. That's insane. Imagine the kind of margins they'll be making on those cars coming from that factory. Now, as you can see, there's only one legacy vehicle in this top 20 list, and that's in 20th place, Volkswagen ID4. I mean, if the ID4 hadn't have managed to scrape into 20th, what would that mean? Well, it wouldn't make any difference, would it really? The fact is here, Audi, Mercedes, realistically Volkswagen, Toyota, Honda, Nissan, General Motors, Ford, Peugeot, whoever else you want to name, it doesn't matter, right? All of them are going to lose an enormous amount of market share in China. And I mean millions and millions of sales. I think the same thing is going to happen all over the world over the next decade. It's going to be a very, very different place, the auto market, by the end of this decade. Brand ranking in China. BYD had 28% so far this year, and they're actually the third largest selling brand in China's automotive market, period, including internal combustion engine vehicles. Right now, it's just behind Volkswagen and Toyota in terms of the entire global automotive picture in China. However, by the end of this year, my prediction is they will overtake both of them. I don't, I don't think that's a dramatic prediction. I think many of you will go, yeah, of course, that's obvious. That's just a matter of time. Then in second place, in the plug-in vehicle market was SAIC. Tesla it was in third with only 6.6%. Cherry next with 5%. Geely Volvo with 4.6%. Now, of course, this includes plug-in hybrids as well. Personally, I don't count them at all. I just don't think they're very relevant to the... It's like saying, um, you know what? We've got this great new design. It's amazing. You know, Nokia comes out and says, we've got this brilliant phone. You'll love it. It's got a motor in there and a battery. So you get to carry around an additional power source. Imagine if you need it, you'll have more power just in case, just in case of the very, very unusual odd chance you might need it. You'll have it there just in case, but you'll have to carry it around with you all the time. The way I see plug-in hybrids, it just doesn't make any sense. But anyway, BYD is doing some interesting things as well. As many of you know, my vehicle, my BYD vehicle should arrive here in Australia next month. In addition to that, they're entering many, many countries worldwide, and I've reported on most of that on this channel, like SAOC and Geely as well. Instead of focusing on Europe, BYD isn't rushing into Europe right now. Instead, they're laying bases in Latin America and Asia Pacific markets, where they're already having a lot of success, like in Costa Rica, where they'll deliver a few thousand units 
over the next month. Same thing goes for Australia, where they'll almost guaranteed to be the second highest electric vehicle seller here in this country by the end of this year. The other thing is, I mean, by doing this, a lot of you have said, right, BYD, yeah, 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 you know, electric vehicle revolution, yeah, yeah, it's going to happen in the West and it's going to happen in Europe and, and China. That's great. But what about the rest of the world? Well, guess what? BYD and companies like Wuling are doing exactly that. They're going to a lot of those markets. India, the Philippines, I mean, Aura in Thailand, the same thing's happening. Many Chinese automakers are focusing on those emerging markets, and it's really exciting to see. It's worth considering that by having 50% or more of a, the vehicle share in those emerging markets, and that probably would include plug-in you know, electric bikes, electric scooters, electric motorbikes as well. And remember, once EVs go mainstream there, who's going to profit the most? Who's going to be the known brand? Who's going to be the company that you know and trust? Well, those new electric vehicle manufacturers from China are probably are going to take up that position. Now, for those of you who don't know, the first few thousand electric vehicle deliveries for BYD are due here next month. They've sold out, and that's going to be a an even bigger story once more and more Australians here be, even become aware of the brand. Many, many millions of people here in the country don't even know who they are yet. And yet still, there's massive demand for the company's electric cars here in a country which is pretty anti-China. I mean, the, the average person here thinks China is evil. They think China wants to destroy the world. And, uh, you know, to be honest, the perception here of a lot of Australians have been brainwashed into thinking that China is really, really bad place. And, you know, there's some things about it that aren't good. There's some things about it that are good. But overall, it's not quite as bad as what Australians think, but yet they're still embracing a Chinese electric car. What does that tell you about what's going to happen in the rest of the world? Well, I think everyone else will embrace them as well. Let me know if I'm wrong. What do you think? Do you agree? Do you disagree? What do you think about China? Let me know in the comment section below and have a great day. Bye-bye.